Welcome to Super Seller Sunday. Today we have somebody amazing. And before we get into telling you exactly who this person is, you guys have been asking us and I've been searching and we've all been searching as a group to find somebody who actually knows how to do the business side of Facebook Marketplace. This gentleman that I'm about to introduce you to has all the criteria that we've been looking for. Not only does he know how to and has figured out how to do the business pages, but he struggled to get there. And that's what we needed with somebody who struggled because I don't know about you, but we're all struggling. This is Peyton Smith. Welcome to our channel. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here and uh, talk about some shops. Hey Peyton, I have a, like a load of questions to ask you. I hope you're ready. We have tons mm -hmm. of people who are interested in learning about shops and how they work, if they should tra transition over from their personal profiles to shops, how long it's going to take and everything else that goes along with it. So are you ready to get into this? Oh yeah. I'm ready. I have some personal questions first. I want to know how do you got started selling online? Oh yeah. Um, well, it was a long time ago. I guess three years ago I got started selling on Facebook or at least familiar with Facebook commerce and how Facebook commerce works, Facebook ads works. Uh, when I had started a company uh, with some friends of mine, uh, we had a robotic startup and we were selling online to schools. We needed a Facebook page and a business page. Yeah. I mean, that's, so I've been, I've had experience for three years running a business page, running ads. Uh, I ran a Kickstarter campaign uh, with a huge ad budget, $10,000 plus. Um, so very familiar with that side of things. And then more recently, I've gotten into selling online probably about the last year or so. Started selling it on Facebook Marketplace, just doing some retail arbitrage, you know, finding some deals in stores and then reselling it locally. And then about a year ago, or I guess about six months ago, a friend of mine told me about drop shipping on Facebook Marketplace and I got addicted pretty quickly and have been doing that since. And then just recently, about two months ago, I started my shop. Have mostly been selling through my shop lately. Still do some of my personal page. I guess the rest is history. Here we are. That's, that's actually a really good backstory. Just so everybody knows, Peyton is not at home right now. And he was nice enough to do this interview with us on, you know, basically remotely. His, his reception isn't super clear. That's why. Uh, but that's it's all good. We just want the info. <laughs> <laughs> So what platforms do you actually sell on right now? So right now I'm selling on Amazon, Facebook Shops, Facebook Marketplace, my personal account, and Shopify. Okay. How many Facebook Marketplace accounts do you have? And do you also sell on your personal account or just on the Marketplace business platform? So I have my personal account and then I have two shops now. I just opened a new shop last night. Three accounts on Facebook, I guess. I read that today yeah. that you had posted that you had just opened a new shop. Tell us how the beginnings of your first shop went. Yeah. So I want to say like probably close to the time I started selling about six months ago, uh, I had something appear at the top of my screen that said, you know, start selling as a business on Marketplace and it kind of caught my eye. I read it and I was like, oh, you know, I'm doing okay with my personal account. So I just ignored it. And I guess kind of August rolled around and I thought, okay, you know, so people were starting you know, let's talk about shops more. I'll see what it's about. I created a business page, you know, got all that set up, went through the whole process, made it look like, you know, I was used to setting them up for my last company and made it look professional and got that ready to go, submitted it for approval and got denied. So this is around like mid August, I think. Now this is when we get in the sound. Dun, dun, dun. Deep. Yeah. <laughs> So I reread the commerce you know, eligibility requirements and a lot of it was about, you know, appearing to be a trustworthy business, you know, that's credible and, you know, having followers, things like that. So I spent a little more time. I think the first time I applied, I might've had like two followers and I just wanted to see if I could, you know, get through the system. So after that, I, I think I got like 15, 20 followers, just friends and family and made a few posts, just maybe three, four or five posts, not too many. Um, applied again, got denied second okay. time. And then, yeah, so this is two times. I this too. is when most people stop. <laughs> yeah. And this is when most people stop because after that second denial, there's no option to submit for review again. And I think I, last time I talked to support, I think they said it takes about a month or so for that to reappear. Now they want to make sure you have time to like put in the effort to get more followers, things like that. But I didn't know that at the time. So I messaged business support, chat support. I don't do email because it takes too long and I always forget to respond. I'm bad at email. They got it approved almost instantly. So I, I talked to a, a nice guy. He did a manual review of it. You know, he said, it looks like I was early on, but I did have a little traction. So he said he would submit it for manual review. I think it was approved like maybe six, eight hours later. And yep. Wow. So you just happened to get the right guy at the right time. 
I did. I have not been that lucky since then. I've tried a few more times with different shops that have been denied. Yeah. So, you know, a little bit of my, my background and I've been trying, trying, trying to get the shop approved. It's been denied twice also. It actually hasn't come up for reapproval at all, but I'm just so crazy not knowing what to do or how to fix it. I'm about ready to delete it. If someone's in that situation, would you recommend that? So I've heard of that being successful. I have not tried that yet. I do have one shop on a second commerce account. So you can have two commerce accounts. And my original thinking was, oh, you know, if I have one on one commerce account, I'll probably have a better chance of having another shop on a second commerce account. I don't think that's the case now. Um, I think it's better to have them all in one account. I think you get approved faster if you have multiple shops. I think it's worth a try because, you know, after you reach out to support, you know, see what support says, you know, sometimes they've told me information that seemed very incorrect, I guess, um, mm -hmm. kind of pointed me in the direction right. of how you get monetized as an influencer. And I, you know, I kind of said, that's not what I'm trying to do. Uh, <laughs> so that experience didn't go well. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I, I can would... you say that again? What did you say? You did, you did what? Yeah. So one time I contacted support and they had me go to the monetization section. And if you haven't seen that before, it's in the creator studio, which is what like oh. game streamers live streamers, uh, you know, influencers use for their monetization. Got it, and got it. To be monetized that way, it takes like 10,000 followers and all kinds of stuff. Um, but just an odd, you know, note on that though, I did go in and my first shop did have all the monetization. So maybe there is some connection. Um, I'm not sure. I've been approved without meeting all those standards. Well, what kind of advertising methods is most successful for you uh, to draw in customers? Do you use pay-per-click or boosting mm -hmm. or do you just do you know, regular ads on your business page, pre-business shop. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think my situation is a little unique. Not everyone has this feature, but how I sell in marketplace, I have the feature called this separate from shops. It's called selling as a business on marketplace. To, to do that, you need a shop and you're selling, you know, as a shop. But like when I go in and post a product, I post it on marketplace like it's like a personal account but through my shop and i can still post on commerce manager and you know do all that i find it's a little easier to go through marketplace and a little more straightforward so i'm able to boost products just like i do on my personal account okay and i've had really really good success boosting on my shop page with custom audiences. Um, a lot of people don't know you can actually make a custom audience in right. Business Manager. And because, you know, if you run a boost with a standard audience, it's 18 to 65 plus all the United States, no narrowing of any audience. You're going to waste a lot of money on people that don't want to see what you're sending out there. I've had really surprising returns um, with my boost. And really a boost is an ad. Um, they just kind of make the process easier. It's basically running an app ad uh, instead of a pay-per-click or awareness ad or conversion ad. Are you able to do promotions on the business pages? Uh, so like discounts? Yes. Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah. you have a lot more control over how those work. Promotions on shops, you can do spend a certain amount, get so much off each item, get a percent discount off your total. Uh, like you can do, um, can you mm -hmm. do promotional codes? You can. Yeah, you can uh, You can definitely do promotional codes, which okay. is, I haven't tried it yet, but I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. That's exciting. Yeah. That actually, I just had an idea. You want to hear it? Yeah. So on the personal side, if you could go in and message all your people, then to give them a coupon code to come back to your business page that's already been approved. Can you imagine how awesome that would be? Yeah. There's so many people that have been wanting to have a business page. And if they can, you know, through all of our help, figure out how to make a business page and then take mm -hmm. that whole audience that's just sitting there, transfer yep. it over to their business page. Yeah. Oh, that makes me excited. So something even more exciting. Um, I just started doing it. So as a shop, you have the option to collect email addresses at checkout. Really? List. Okay. And, you know, that way you can market off Facebook. You know, you don't have to worry about getting restricted for messaging too many customers. And as a business, Business page, you can't really message uh, a customer as a business um, through Messenger unless they message you first. I can't just go search for a customer. If we've messaged back and forth in the past, yeah, we can continue our conversation. But all you can do is email if you haven't had a conversation with them, which works just as well. But yeah, having a marketing list, I think would be awesome. So is it less hands-on where, you know, on the personal side, we get a lot of, um, is this available? Um, would you take, you know, that, that kind of chatter? Is that pretty much 
on the business pages? Um, you probably won't like this answer, but I almost think it's more hands-on for whatever really? reason. I don't know why. I don't know how people seeing products, things like that, where they're finding them. I guess they're not reading the description or looking at they the price, never. You're but right. I still get questions all the time. And I think really the main issue is that chat box right there that prompts them to ask, is this still available? So, you know, I, I get plenty of, is this still available? You know, one thing to help combat that is you can do automated messaging uh, as a business. You can basically tell Messenger to, if someone sends you a message like that, respond with the same response every time. Like mine, for instance, says, you know, they say, is this item still available? It says, yes, all items in my store, you know, if they're visible, they're in stock. And then I can send a link that says shop now. And that, that takes them to my shop. So you're giving them the link to the product that they just asked about that says shop now, or you're just giving them a link to the shop overall? To the shop overall I haven't played around with automation too much I'm hoping you can send a link for this specific products but I haven't tried that yet well that's actually pretty fascinating to have you say that so there's probably a lot more I guess you could say customization features to message people uh, and mm -hmm. become more automated and I guess one of the nice thing I should mention is you can save responses to common responses you know if someone asks a question I have not tried like actually pulling up a saved response and trying to send that usually like Facebook like the AI will be like hey this question looks familiar do you want to send this response and then it'll give me the nice. option to, so I don't have to, you know, nice. type it out. You're you're selling me on shops right now. <laughs> It's definitely a different piece. Uh, to me, it's still selling though. When I mm -hmm. used to sell houses and nobody ever wanted to work with HUD homes, HUD, HUD homes are government homes that are being resold to the public. Oh, okay. And a lot of the realtors didn't want to have to deal with it because they didn't know how to do it. But at the end of the day, to me, it was still a house. A house is a house is a house, right? Mm -hmm. The process is still the same, just the paperwork's a little bit different. And maybe yeah. some of the processes are a little bit different but you still have to follow the rules. You still have to get from point A to point Z so that you can move in. To me, it's it's the same. How do I just toggle a little bit mm -hmm. to figure out the process for this part versus this part, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So do you find any glitches on the business side? Uh, my first shop, definitely. So my first shop, I got approved. I had shipping available, but only for like five, six, seven, eight categories. Most things I was trying to list didn't have shipping. You know, it's driving me crazy for like three days. And so I, this was trying to list on Marketplace as a business. And then I tried listing in Commerce Manager. You know, that wasn't working either. Finally, someone should, suggested to me, you know, try the app, the issues that happen on desktop don't happen on the app. So I was able to ship all categories in the app. So what I was having to do is I list everything on my desktop. I think listing on phones is time consuming. And so I list it on my phone as local, save it, publish it, and then go into my app, edit it, offer shipping. You know, it was a bit of a workaround, but you know, it works. My second shop I opened yesterday had all, all shipping categories. It's definitely not like an account based thing. So I don't know. Um, that was a weird glitch. Uh, let me think of anything else. Sometimes products don't show up on the marketplace channel after you post them. Uh, I've definitely experienced this. I assumed it was mainly because I had the, you know, kind of the different way to sell in marketplace than most people, you know, like you and I were talking about earlier. It sounds like, it looks like you're experiencing that problem as well. And yes, I've also heard that, <laughs> <laughs> and I've heard that people that have the marketplace channel enabled sometimes I don't think any of their products appear on Marketplace. I imagine there's workarounds for everything. It's that's just, why we're here. Yeah. That's why we are here. We are like we are like the professional workarounders. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just so early. Um, people don't realize, or some people don't realize, the Marketplace channel for shops has been around for maybe a month, uh, widespread. And then shops themselves are just becoming more and more focus of Facebook in this last like three to six months. You know, I think they're just still working out some of the kinks. Yeah, agreed. And I'm sure it'll have glitches just like the others. I'm just wondering mm -hmm. how many glitches you've already encountered. I know that people are, are being challenged every day on both platforms. The strong ones are going to survive and mm -hmm. thrive, in my opinion opinion. Yeah. And hopefully uh, through our group, we can help a lot of people be able to thrive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I should mention one last glitch really quick. Oh yeah. So this is a big one in some of the Facebook groups. A lot of people or a, a noticeable amount of people are mentioning their shops are being deleted and all of their orders all time are being refunded. I'm seeing 3,000, 4,000 as high as I think $13,000 refunded yeah. with no answer, blocked out of the account, accounts deleted. I don't know how I feel about this. I don't know if it's a glitch or something they're doing on their account that's getting them flagged. I know a lot of people feel strongly about either way if 
they do. I have a feeling it's something they're doing with their account that is not up to standards. Most people don't realize there's so many more rules and Facebook looks at these accounts so much differently than a personal Facebook account. That they're gonna treat you like a large company. And you know, if you're messing up, if you're entering fake tracking numbers or at least invalid tracking numbers or not responding to customers in a good amount of time, I mean, you're gonna get flagged. I've also heard that, so you can give access to other Facebook accounts to manage your commerce profile. So you can do like order management, things like that. And I've heard if you have someone out of the US now, that's an instant flag as suspicious activity. So I know, I, the reason I say that, I know a lot of people have VAs, I have a VA myself. You know, if they are giving access to VAs to connect to their account, to order order things easier, that could be flagging them as well. Um, Versus going through any desk or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think part of that's just Facebook's cracking down. They're experiencing so much scamming right now. I mean, it's in the national news um, in the world news. If you Google it, it's a huge problem. And I, I don't think, you know, they don't mess around with it. One of the things that you were telling me about the strict guidelines that they have in just approving a sale versus on the marketplace personal side feels a little bit looser as far as, as pushing mm -hmm. a product through. And I want you to explain that, but I want to preface it by saying I did get a shop to go through. So my first one, deny, deny. And then the second one I've had around for a while and I made it into a shop and it worked and I was so excited and you helped me with that and in verifying that and put some products on there and I actually got a sale and it sat there pending like everybody else's were, uh, stuff yep. was pending yeah. right there and I thought oh it's just this, this is a glitch but that's not what you said go ahead now you can now yep. you can finish yep. my story <laughs> One of the first things I noticed when I opened my shop, you know, I got, I think you rank highly when you open a shop, you know, thousands of views and hours and, you know, dozens of sales. And one thing I noticed was a lot of them were pending. And I was, you know, just wondering, like, I might have had 12 to, you know, 20 orders pending at one time. You know, I was wondering why that was happening. A fair amount of them were canceled by Facebook. So I looked into it and there are stricter, I guess, fraud and scam detection tools used for Facebook shops because you know more businesses are using them. So what they're doing is, you know, sometimes it is the customer's bank, you know, credit card, etc., you know, just not going through. But other times Facebook is flagging customers as, you know, previous fraud or scams and canceling those orders for you. Some people are upset by that, you know, I get it. I'd rather not deal with chargebacks, refunds and all that stuff, especially cuz chargebacks cost $20 if you have a store uh, on uh, in addition to the refund. Uh, but don't don't be afraid of that I've had two out of 800 orders. It's not bad. It's it's the price you pay. I mean, every company out there is getting chargebacks every single day. Probably way more than uh, you know a small business is. It's the price you pay. If you see a lot of orders pending, I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, you know, I'd sleep better at night, honestly, knowing that potential fraud and all that has not affected you. What do you think the biggest benefit of our group has been for you? I think the community and like the fact, like you said earlier, you know, finding these workarounds or finding the common ground in some of these problems we're facing that you can't necessarily get an answer from Facebook on. You know, you see people connecting these details and you, you know, you start like getting a feel for, okay, we think this problem is caused by this. So let's try avoiding this and see if it, you know, goes away. And I feel like a lot of those, you know, tricks people mention um, are very successful. Some, at least in the shop I've found, you know, some don't hold true like they do for personal accounts, or I guess it seems like they don't hold true. Like, uh, for instance, some people are very adamant on not renewing products, you know, when they're doing well. And, and out of fears, you know, it might lower them in the algorithm and ranking. At least with my That's shop, it. I've noticed I've noticed it helps every time with my shop. Even I'll have products selling once an hour with 20,000 views over the last two weeks and I'll renew it and I'll get more sales. So that could just be my experience. I think the ranking is different uh, with the shops on the Marketplace channel. Well, not to back up, I guess, but you do renew your listings every week on shops or do mm -hmm. they, you do? Okay. Uh, well, it, again, I forget that I'm selling as a business on Marketplace technically. Um, oh, so that, okay. That okay. changes my experience. So you will not have to renew your posts on shops. But that being said, you know, if a post on your shop, you know, isn't doing well in the marketplace channel anymore, you know, maybe you try something like deleting it and relisting it, which isn't a, like a specific feature on shops. I think, yeah, newer products typically do better uh, with the ranking. Thanks. I know that's a lot of info I'm laying on you. I know, you're, we're just, we're, you're like throwing buckets of water on us right now. <laughs> And there's so I much talk, more. I could talk for <laughs> probably five hours on this. Hey, don't let me stop you. Keep going. <laughs>
Well, so if you could give some advice to our viewers, what would it be? Some people think I go overkill with how I set up these shops. You know, maybe it's the the previous startup founder in me. No matter how small it is, I'm going to do it to the best of my ability and do it by the book um, when it comes to business. You know, I think the way I set my pages up and the way I've run my shop has helped me, one, get approved, and then two, keep my metrics high and not have any issues with being deleted or anything like that. So, you know, I did everything I could to set up my shop, and I, I recommend people do that with theirs too in the setup process. Set up a Shopify store, you know, made it look like an established business. And because my goal is to turn my store into a brand and eventually wholesale and source my own products. So I had the Shopify store, had a custom domain that matched my business page name. And you can get things like this for like $6 a year, you know, super easy. And maybe I think I pay $3 a month for my email, totally worth it. And I think things like that, and there's some more I'll get into in a second, just establish your credibility. You know, when you're on here saying, if you go read the Facebook commerce website or the help website, you know, it's clear that they want shops to be established businesses with good, you know, presences, uh, customer bases, things like that. And that's why I think it's important to come off as a established reputable business. And when you have a website, you have an email that's not Gmail, you know, like something support at gmail.com that adds a lot to your trustworthiness with Facebook. And just in general, there's a lot of platforms out there for businesses that don't allow things like Gmail or require you to have a website to do business with them. Maybe start without a website. I know most people get approved or a fair amount have gotten approved without a website. So that might be a little much. Uh, that was part of my strategy. I want to push people to my website eventually, but just things like the email domain. And then like they ask you to put your own return policy, uh, a link to it, you know, your page info. So, you know, where are you going to host that link except a website? I did see that, but it still has to be 30 days, right? There's certain parameters that it has to, has to come within. You can add to it, right? Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah, you can add to it. You know, I think everything says optional. The link, it might be optional. I, I've definitely, started a page without adding it and went back and added it later with all the like pages getting deleted and things like that which might be a bigger issue or smaller issue than it seems like i don't take any risks i know how finicky facebook can be so i just do it by the book and do it as good as possible i think that's the way to go you know if you're going to start a page a business page before getting uh, or before applying for a shop fill out every bit of information you can profile picture cover photo you know, post for a week or two. Um, I wouldn't apply until it's been open for a month. I can't remember where, I know I didn't dream it, but someone told me, I think it might've been business support that having a business page older than a month increases your chances of approval because it's less. Right, suspicious. because they're never going to say flat out has to be a month, has to be six months, has to be three weeks. Mm -hmm. You can get it the next day. Yeah. They just say engage. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Engage. <laughs> yeah. 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 So post, you know, make it look like a business, you know, sell them on it. All of this helps, you know, not just with getting approved on Facebook, this helps with, you know, making sales. I have more returning customers than I would have ever imagined on my shop. You know, I maybe had one every you know few months on my personal marketplace, but and it'll tell you how many of, you know, your customers are returning and buying more items. I think that's just a cool thing to see. You know, if you make everything look like a, a nice store that people want to return to, they will return and, and buy more things. To summarize, you know, do everything to the best of your ability. Don't cut corners. You may not need a website, but at least, you know, establish a presence, get some followers, friends and family, just sell Facebook on it, sell your customers on it. Everybody, this is Peyton. He's awesome. <laughs> thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thank you for having me.